Good morning, everyone. My name is Chuck Bain, and I have the honor of serving as the director of the Law Enforcement Academy and to serve as your MC for today's ceremony. Uh, due to the Academy's COVID protocols, we are unable to support an entirely open graduation ceremony, but we do have a small contingent of family members with us today who were able to attend the family survival training class with us this morning. But yea, be small, you be mighty. We also are live streaming this ceremony today for viewers on the internet, so we extend our welcome to families, friends, colleagues, and administrators who are viewing us today as we celebrate the graduation of this basic class. This morning, we celebrate the graduation of Peace Officer Basic 21A156. That number that you see on your program does have some meaning. 21 obviously is the year, a indicate it's the first peace officer basic of 2021, and 156 denotes that this is the 156th graduating peace officer basic class from the academy. This ceremony is steeped in history and tradition. Veteran officers who began their careers in Wyoming and who have graduated from our academy have shared the same sense of accomplishment and perhaps even felt relief by today's ceremonies. Peace Officer Basic Training graduation marks a time of transition for these officers as they begin their law enforcement careers. This transition takes them from being individual contributors to public servants who now must focus on others and not themselves. This transition process is not easy. 37 students started this basic class with 29 graduating today. These men and women have every right to be proud of their hard work and accomplishments during these past 14 weeks. And in those 14 weeks, we have addressed them as Mr. or Ms. Shortly, however, when they are awarded their certificate, they, for the first time here at the Academy, we will address them as officer, deputy, or warden as another sign of this transition taking place. But this ceremony is not just about the graduates. It is also an expression of thanks to their families and administrators who have supported them in their absence. We welcome audience participa participation in today's ceremonies with yells and cheers as we celebrate the success of these students. It is more than appropriate to share in the overwhelming pride honor and joy that would be felt in this room today. Remember, today is likely the only time in these officers' careers where they will encounter a large group of people that are actually happy to see them. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand and welcome Peace Officer Basic Class 21A-156. Class, please come forward. Audience, please remain standing for our, our Pledge of Allegiance and our invocation. The class has selected their classmates who are military veterans to lead us today in the pledge. pleased to have Tim Ricker, a member and past president of the Wyoming Law Enforcement Chaplains Association with us to deliver today's invocation. Chaplain Ricker. Please bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, 
I thank you that we were able once again to assemble and honor these graduates and bring before them before your throne of mercy and ask for your grace to be in their lives. I thank you for the graduates who stand here before us. Thank you for the desire that you instilled in their hearts to serve their fellow man and for their willingness to surrender to this high and lofty calling. Thank you for the families and loved ones of the graduates and for their faithfulness in taking care of things back home. Thank you for this institute of higher learning and training and learning that goes on here to instruct the officers to protect and to keep us safe. I pray that you bless the director, instructors, and staff for committing their lives and talents to teaching and serving here. I pray for your hand of protection and provision to be upon them. I pray also for these graduates as they go back home to their respective communities and carry on with their God-given duties and responsibilities. I pray that you protect them each minute of every day, reward them richly for their sacrifice and service. I also pray for their families and for your hedge of protection around them. Please watch over them and bless them all. And in closing, I ask for your Holy Spirit to convict and direct the leaders of America to follow your perfect will. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Please be seated. At this time, please allow me a moment to introduce a few of the people that are sitting before you today. Just to my right, I'm going to skip the first gentleman to, to my right for right now. Uh, Chaplain Ricker, you've already met. Let me introduce Chris Walsh, the Executive Director of the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission. Next to him is Jesse Curtis, Deputy Director. Right behind me and immediately to my right is Kurt Taboga, Training Manager for the Academy. No organization can or would be successful without support from behind the scenes and our Academy is no exception. These staff members are what makes training possible and highly effective. As I am speaking, three of our most vital service sections remain at work elsewhere in the facility. It is their collective efforts that contribute and ensure the quality of today's ceremonies. These sections include our food service, custodial, and our maintenance staff. Even though they're not actually present with us here today, would you please join me in a round of applause for their hard work and dedication. Our office section is known for its dedication and efficiency. Without them, we could not accomplish our mission. Could I ask the members of the office team with us here today to please stand and be recognized? The last section to introduce this morning is our instructional staff. Whatever you may have heard about this group, their pride, their enthusiasm for their jobs, and their dedication to the students that they train is second to none. Not only they instruct a wide variety of subjects, they also serve as team leaders, coaches, coordinators, and even security for today's event. Instructional staff present today, would you please stand and be recognized. I also want to extend our appreciation to the agency administrators and their staff members who may be viewing this morning. Thank you for your support of these students and your continued support of the Academy. It is now my honor to introduce to you our keynote speaker for today's ceremony. He is a lifelong resident of Rock Springs. After high school, he enlisted in the United States Air Force where he spent four and a half years as a security police law enforcement specialist, and he retired in 2007 from the United States Air Force Reserve as a security forces specialist. He began his civilian police career with the Rock Springs Police Department in 1990. He was promoted to sergeant in 1996, division commander in 2006, and was appointed police chief in 2014. He is an FBI National Academy graduate. He currently serves on the Wyoming Public Safety Communications Commission, the Wyoming Gaming Commission. He is second vice president of the Wyoming Association of Sheriffs and Chiefs of Police, and he also serves on the Governor's Council on Impaired Driving. 
He's married to his lovely wife, Gina, and they are raising their 16-year-old daughter, Ellie. He has two boys, Christopher and Daniel, as well as three grandchildren, Christopher Jr., who is five, Charlie, who is five, and Kendall, three, which must make a very active Christmas morning. His family is first and foremost in his life, along with his face, faith. He enjoys all the outdoor activities Wyoming has to offer, especially fishing, camping, hunting, and snowboarding. It is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Rock Springs Chief of Police, Dwayne Pacheco. Thank you, Director. It's truly an honor to address this graduating class of the Wyoming Law Enforcement Academy. 30 years ago, almost to the day, I graduated from this same winter session of the Academy. We didn't have a pandemic. We didn't have a record snowstorm. But in those days, the Academy graduates and guests were treated to a prime rib dinner. Oh, the pandemic, we're not having prime rib today. Okay, sorry guys, um, that's not gonna happen. But anyway, there have been numerous changes in Wyoming law enforcement since 1990. My challenge to each of you is to embrace change. Uphold the values that bring honor to our chosen profession and manage the risk when possible. As a peace officer, we hold ourselves to high standards and our communities hold us to even higher standards. We must be true, trustworthy. This includes integrity, doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Kind of hard to do now without, with our cameras, our body cameras, but promise keeping and loyalty. You will recite an oath of honor before you graduate. And it is my hope that you will repeat this oath annually and live by its words. I ensure my sworn officers say this oath every January during my chief's call, where I address the, ent the entire sworn and non-sworn staff. We must have respect. Treat everyone with respect, regardless of any biases or provocations. And this includes suspects. Persons we arrest, treat with respect they may provide the lead to solve a major case. That same person may help you out when your backup is minutes away and you're struggling to effect an arrest. I once had an ex-con slip his cuffs. Once I gained control and secured the individual at, j at the jail, he gave me a lesson on how he placed a finger next to his wrist during the cuffing technique, which provided just enough room for him to slip his hand out. Fortunately, no one was injured, but he respected me enough to share that tactic. I learned another valuable lesson that day. As the transport officer, always double check the suspect's cuffs when cuffed by a fellow officer. We must be responsible. This includes accountability, pursuit of excellence, and self-restraint. We are no longer allowed to turn the other cheek and see nothing. We have a responsibility to stop a fellow officer from abusing a suspect or using excessive force. Or we will be a party to dis disciplinary action or a crime. We strive for justice and fairness. This includes equality and demonstrating due process. To err or make a mistake is human. To lie is unacceptable. And it will get you fired, decertified, and a place on a national register. You will make mistakes. Learn from them. But tell the truth. I tell my agency, each positive encounter we have with our community in a call for service, an open house, junior police academy, torch run, jackalope jump, they're all investments in the community because someday we're gonna have to make a withdrawal on that deposit and on that investment. 
and it's my hope the community sees the good in our agency. We have to care, show concern for others, show consideration for the decisions that affect others. We're not robots, and it's okay to show your feelings and to be human. In 2013, Sergeant Clausen, then a canine officer, knew the mother of a young boy who had a terminal illness. The boy's name was Mikey Thorpe. And Officer Clausen wanted to make Mikey feel special. So we made him an honorary police officer for the day. He was sworn in by our mayor. We gave Mikey a genuine Rock Springs Police Department badge. We gave him a ride in our department UTV, our patrol vehicle. We gave him a canine demonstration, provided him gifts from our Police Protective Association. Mikey died four months later. But we made him forget his illness, if not just for a couple of hours. And finally, we must have civic virtue and citizenship. Be socially conscious for our community. Volunteer. Be the change you want to see and be the example. The Boys and Girls Club, United Way, coaching your child's athletic team, leading a youth Bible study group at your church, these are all ways to help the community. And it only takes a few volunteer hours to make a difference. Some say law enforcement is under attack, and I cannot disagree with that. That said, I'm motivated for the challenges that lie ahead for our career field and our fellow peace officers. I grieve for those who are killed in the line of duty, and I look for ways to learn from the events that tarnish our badge. Gordon Graham, a 33-year veteran of law enforcement and risk management expert, tells us if it's predictable, it's preventable. After hearing about the accidental shooting of a citizen by Officer Potter who believed she was holding a taser, I went straight to my arrest control instructors and I asked them how our agency could prevent the same type of mishap. They both agreed, carrying their taser on the weak side of their exterior vest carrier and only drawing and deploying that taser with their weak side hand was the solution. Furthermore, the exterior vest carrier only holds less lethal tools and the gun belt holds your service weapon. Thursday is training day at the Rock Springs Police Department. We will begin tomorrow to learn muscle memory in the process of drawing and deploying our tasers from the weak side. Knowing predictable is preventable brings me to the Below 100 initiative, which is an initiative to bring the annual line of duty deaths below 100. This has not happened in over 65 years. And the five tenets include, number one, wear your vest. Traditional or exterior body armor carriers triples the survivability of a shot to the torso. Never go on duty without one. Wear your seatbelt. Amazing enough, some of our officers believe the seatbelt hinders their ability to get out of the car. While it takes practice, the odds of getting in a crash are too great to skip the most basic safety precaution. Watch your speed. Slow down. Speed kills. Number four, the acronym WIN. What's important now? Living in the moment or being a master of the present. Prioritize and constantly reevaluate what is going on. Focus on the task at hand. And five, remember complacency kills. Apathy or lack of concern toward our own safety or denial that something bad can happen. We must maintain a high level of awareness. I asked my officers for, the, for some advice for a healthy career, and here are a few of their comments. Stay positive, stay above negativity, have confidence in your career, learn the law, train and hone your skills. Leave your job at work and your personal life at home, learn to turn the job off. Develop leadership skills, even at the lowest level. 
You cannot do everything. You are part of a team for a reason. Have a career and retirement goals for five, 10, or 20 years. A strong moral character, your reputation will follow you forever. Social media, keep your life private. You are a target and people are watching everything you do. Build resilience and coping skills. Improve physical and mental health. Develop trust with the community, people you work with and those you work for. You are going to change as a person. Your life is going to change. Keep the people close who believe in you. And finally, my favorite, the name on your patch represents who hired you. The name on your nameplate represents who raised you. Represent both with honesty and integrity. In closing, I would remind each of you to embrace change. Uphold our values and remember that which is predictable is preventable. I wish you all a safe, successful, and fulfilling career. You have chosen the most honorable profession, and I am proud to have each of you on our team. Thank you. Chief, thank you for accepting our invitation to speak today and your wonderful remarks for our class. As usual, there are individuals within a class who go above and beyond. Now we want to give recognition to those officers who have achieved distinction in this basic course. Instructor Warren Steele, would you please come forward to present the Physical Fitness Award. Thank you, Director. During basic training, the students attend 36 hours of fitness instruction. These training sessions include aerobic, anaerobic, and core strength building circuit training. The students are tested physically from the moment they arrive until their final PT assessment. Each assessment includes their maximum number of push-ups and sit-ups in one minute, as well as their time for a one and a half mile run. The top PT award goes to the student who has the highest cumulative percentile score during the final PT assessment based on both age and gender. With the following three students who scored 95% or higher, please stand to be recognized. From Wyoming State Parks, Officer Christopher DeLay. From the Rock Springs Police Department, Officer Amber Sidaway. From the Laramie County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Heather Wilson. The Physical Fitness Award winner completed the following. 38 sit-ups in 60 seconds, 61 push-ups in 60 seconds, and a one and a half mile run in 13 minutes, 48 seconds. The Physical Fitness Award for Peace Officer Basic 21A 156 goes to Deputy Heather Wilson from the Laramie County Sheriff's Office. Mr. Millick, would you please come forward to give recognition to those who excelled in firearms? Thank you, Mr. Steele. To prepare for final proficiency scores, Peace Officer Basic students shoot approximately 1,500 handgun rounds at distances of 3 to 50 yards as well as 600 rifle rounds out to 100 yards. In order for a student to achieve certification, they must shoot a minimum proficiency score of 80% with both their handgun and their patrol rifle. The WLEA Top Gun Award is given in recognition of an individual's outstanding performance and dedication to firearms excellence. 
The top shooter in this class shot 100% with their handgun and 100% with their rifle. The WLEA Top Gun Award for Peace Officer Basic 21A-156 goes to Deputy Brock George from the Campbell County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Mr. Walls, would you please come forward to give recognition to those who excelled in academics? Thank you, Mr. Millick. The students are tested continuously as they progress through basic training. They must meet established minimum requirements in order to receive their certificate of successful completion. Specifically, they must pass 10 examinations totaling 624 questions. Will the following students please stand to be recognized for their academic achievements? From the Laramie County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Robert Fertig. From the Campbell County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Brendan Lloyd and from the Lander Police Department, Officer Cami Fegler. <laughs> the top academic award goes to the student who achieved the highest academic cumulative average throughout the Peace Officer Basic. The top academic student in this class had an average of 94.39% over the course of the basic training. Out of 624 total questions, this officer answered 589 correctly. The academic award for Peace Officer Basic 21A-156 goes to Deputy Robert Fertig from the Laramie County Sheriff's Office. Congratulations. Each class elects a spokesperson to represent their class at graduation to share their collective thoughts and experiences from the training. This class has chosen Officer Brooke Chambers from the Gillette Police Department as their class speaker. Before I get started, I want to ask Deputy Heather Wilson to come up and talk about our class project. So at <clears throat> the beginning of um, our basic, we are talked to by our, this, the instructors um, about doing a class project. And um, our class project was microwaves. <laughs> so during the first few weeks, uh, multiple students attempted to make Hot Pockets, warm up their meals, Endless bags of popcorn that ended up going into the garbage as fast as they could outside of the academy. When um, the snowmageddon hit, uh, eight of us got stuck here. And um, during that time, there were many curses placed on those um, microwaves. We have one microwave in the upstairs day room and one microwave in the day room downstairs. Um, so we decided to bless the next basics coming up here with working microwaves. <laughs> we even got to enjoy some of the popcorn towards the end of our basic class and especially Kale um, up there in the front row. Um, he enjoyed popcorn this Monday as we had a mock trial in courtroom. So thank you. I want to start out by thanking Director Bain and the entire staff here at the Academy. I would also like to thank retired Chief Jim Local for the opportunity he gave me at the Gillette Police Department, as well as Chief Chuck Deaton for the unwavering continued support. To the friends and family that supported our class throughout the past few months, we appreciate everything you've done. I also want to thank Deputy Hoffman for his help in review of this speech. Over the past 12 weeks, we've all come to know one, each other, one another very well. We all come from different childhoods, backgrounds, and experiences. Each of us has a different reason for standing here today and different factors that created a desire to pursue this career. 
Even with all of our differences, today we have accomplished something together. We have experienced the stress of passing weekly tests, the anxiety over getting sprayed with OC, or the enjoyment of watching the small group of us who actually got sprayed struggle through it. The seemingly never-ending custody and control training, our weapons qualification in what seemed like a 30 mile an hour wind. Through all of that, no one here quit. We pushed through, persevered, and encouraged each other. There were several students here with a wide range of experiences who offered guidance and knowledge to those of us who needed it. I believe I speak for everyone when I say thank you to those with that experience who happily assisted others when needed. We have all faced challenging circumstances at several different points in our lives. Those challenges have given us a unique mindset and varying approaches to how we live life. Our class is filled with a broad range of age groups, diverse personalities, different strengths and weaknesses. We, have all, we all have one thing in common though. Each of us have been drawn to a career of service to our community, where the daily challenges and decisions we make determine whether we come home at the end of our shift or not. You never know what you're going to encounter from day to day. We have learned that over the past 12 weeks, there is no such thing as a routine call. Each one will be unique and challenging. Always remember to keep your head on a swivel and always be asking yourself, what's scary now? Is this the best place I can be? Thank you, Mr. Sill, for drilling that in our head. March 22nd, ironically, we began our active shooter training the same day that there was an active shooter at a King Supers in Boulder, Colorado. Officer Eric Talley was one of 10 people killed by the gunman. He was the first officer to arrive at the grocery store. The timing of our training in that shooting put several of us on edge. We are all aware of the importance and danger that comes with our career. However, this situation put everything into perspective. Officer Talley served for the Boulder Police Department since 2010. He went to work on March 22nd, understanding the risks associated with his job. He chose to protect his community, just like the rest of us have. This devastating shooting may not have happened in our counties or cities, but that is not to say that it never will. Whether you have just moved to Wyoming or were raised here, we all now have the same responsibility and honor of protecting our state, our parks, our counties, cities, and towns. I believe I can speak for our entire class when I say there is not much else that compares to the honor of serving as law enforcement in Wyoming. We live in a world full of uncertainty and fear. The last few years have been difficult for law enforcement. The media doesn't focus much attention on the good that peace officers do on a daily basis. Always do the right thing even when you think no one is watching because there's a good chance that someone is. A few weeks ago I was talking with a former police chief that was here at the academy for the challenge course. We spoke for a while, but he said something that really stuck out to me. He has been in law enforcement for over 16 years, and with that obviously comes a lot of knowledge and experience. He has enjoyed his career and wouldn't change it, but he has a hard time imagining starting out a career in law enforcement at this time because of the instant target and persistent degrading. His comment shows how much has changed in our world, but it also shows the incredible dedication and commitment each of us have, even with all that neg negativity and uncertainty surrounding law enforcement. We have all chosen to serve our communities. This is why I admire our entire class and every law enforcement officer across the country for the sacrifice they have chosen to make. Ensuring that all of us move forward from here with our courage and selfless service will carry us far. I have no doubt that each of us will be successful in our career and will guarantee to show the great integrity of Wyoming law enforcement. I'll finish this with a quote by Jocko Willink that seems fitting for our class. People who are successful decide to I'm going to start that over. People who are successful decide they are going to be successful. They make that choice. They decide to study hard. They decide to work hard. They decide to be the first person to get to work and the last to go home. Thank you. Thank you, class. On behalf of the future students coming uh, after you for the microwaves, um, I'm sure that they will put those things to good use. And um, um, 
as a, as a side note for all those in the audience of, in their dormitory and in those day rooms that they were talking about, the refrigerators, the TVs, the DVD players, the X boxes, the Y boxes, the whatever of those things that are in there are all student projects or donated. They're not spent by taxpayer money uh, in order to enjoy that. So thank you for keeping up the, the uh, uh, comforts for your fellow officers. Thank you, Officer Chambers, for your words and, that you, and your remarks uh, today as well. And now to our final award. In every class, there are those students who are willing to distinguish themselves by their exemplary work and their efforts. They strive to become the best of the best within this class and their chosen profession. As a form of recognition for the one student who continually performed to their best of the abilities, the Academy has established the Honor Graduate Award. Mr. Toboga and Mr. Waltz, please come forward to give recognition to those students who have been nominated for this award. Thank you, Director Bain. The Honor Grad Award is the highest award the Academy presents to the students graduating from the Wyoming Law Enforcement Basic Course. In order to be eligible to receive the award, a student must be nominated by a member of the instructional staff. It is not a popularity contest, and it is an honor just to be nominated. Once the officer is nominated, a very comprehensive and objective point system is used to assess the nominee's performance while attending the basic. The specific areas that are evaluated are the student's academic scores, their proficiency with firearms, their custody control performance, and their physical fitness. In addition, students are assessed in the following six areas of professional citizenship, leadership, effort, cooperation, initiative, attitude, and improvement. Will the following officers please come forward and receive your merit award for your recognition of being nominated. From Riverton PD, Officer Taggart Hammerlick. And from Laramie County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Heather Wilson. The Honor Graduate Award recognizes that one student in each basic class who exemplifies the attributes of a professional peace officer and who performed exceptionally in all phases of training. In addition to receiving a plaque today and with the intent to encourage the recipient beyond today's recognition, the Honor Grad will receive a $500 scholarship for any advanced training offered here at the Wyoming Law Enforcement Academy. It is a long-standing tradition that the audience stand while the Honor Graduate Award is presented, so would you please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, the Honor Grad Award for Peace Officer Basic 21A 156 goes to Deputy Heather Wilson from Laramie County Sheriff's Office. Please be seated. At this time, I would ask Mr. Jesse Curtis to come forward. Thank you, Mr. Taboga. Um, all of the staff here at WLAA congratulate you, Peace Officer Basic 21A 156, for completing your basic training. We have started this journey just a few short weeks ago and today we have arrived. On behalf of the class and academy staff, we would like to thank 
the many Wyoming law enforcement agencies and associations across the state who partner with us to provide the best training possible so that these new officers have what they need to do their jobs competently, reasonably, and safely. The Wyoming Associations of Sheriffs, Chiefs, and Police, the Wyoming Peace Officers Association, the Wyoming Law Enforcement Chaplains Association, and the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission are but a few of the many who regularly devote expertise, financial assistance, and manpower to assist us in accomplishing our mission, and we thank you. The Academy would like to recognize the families of these men and women who themselves willingly sacrifice in a thousand ways that most people don't even understand so that their loved one can go out and defend their communities. The family events, the schedules, the chores, the missed moments, the anxiety over the potential for that phone call, the pain of watching your officer come home suffering from seeing the unimaginable. You do this willingly, not just once, not just for a time, but every day for your loved one so they can put on that uniform. They cannot do what they do without you. You took care of things these last several weeks so your loved one could be here and study their craft. We see you, we thank you for your sacrifice, and we appreciate you. Peace Officer Basic 21A156, we have arrived. You have spent the last several weeks constantly engaged in activities that forced you to face adversity that you did not ask for. Reconcile failures that were often quickly pointed out to you. Recognize successes that no one else seemed to notice. Deal with boredom, deal with people, solve countless problems, and at times struggle to see the purpose in it all. And despite that, you have arrived here today. You have achieved. You have earned your place in our profession. You learned from your failures and built on your successes. You found peace and rest in boredom. You figured out that people can be incredibly beautiful and unimaginably horrible, and sometimes during the same call. And while each of you have your own reasons for becoming an officer, it is our hope that you caught a glimpse of the purpose of our profession to protect others, to serve others, and to sacrifice for others. To willingly step into that arena each day and fight the dragons that many times society cannot bring themselves to even look upon. It is a calling, a hard calling, sometimes a thankless and brutal calling, but it is also the most noble and precious of callings, accepted each day by men and women of high honor who love their communities and choose to act. We are proud of you for accepting that calling. Our challenge to each of you now is to take the greatest of care in accepting that. Our free society depends upon you doing well. Director Bain, I recommend the awarding of certificates of successful completion for the Wyoming Post approved 605 hour Peace Officer Basic Course 21A 156. Folks, as uh, we get ready here, if you want to come down and take pictures, do things like that, um, we have plenty of time to do those kinds of things as your graduate is presented with their certificate. From the Riverton Police Department, Officer Logan M. Alley. We have several special presenters here with us today uh, to award certificates to their loved ones. These are uh, individuals who have served or are currently serving in law enforcement. Our first special presenter gave his law, began his law enforcement career with Lovell PD in 2004 and moved to Bighorn County Sheriff's Office in 2007, where he currently serves as an investigator. Here to present his wife's certificate, please help me welcome Investigator Jeff Angel. From the Bighorn County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Carrie A. Angel. <laughs> From the Natrona County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Daniel W. Bell.
From the Park County Sheriff's Office, Deputy William P. Brown. From the Laramie County, excuse me, uh, from the Laramie Police Department, Officer Christopher M. Kane. <laughs> from the Campbell County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Carson J. Kale. From the Gillette Police Department, Officer Brooke R. Chambers. From Wyoming State Parks, Ranger Christopher L. DeLay. From the Lander Police Department, Officer Cami R. Fegler. From the Laramie County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Robert D. Fertig. From the Mills Police Department, Officer Eric R. Garris. From the Campbell County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Brock T. George. From the Riverton Police Department, Officer Taggart C. Harmelink. From the Douglas Police Department, Officer Marchin P. Herman. From the Natrona County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Tyler P. Hoffman. From the Sublet County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Gregory B. Kemp. From the Gillette Police Department, Officer Casey R. Lewis. From the Campbell County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Brendan G. Lloyd. From the Albany County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Rebecca T. Lubers. Our next special presenter began her law enforcement career in 1999 with the Natrona County Sheriff's Office, where she retired in 2008. Here to present her husband's certificate, please help me welcome Corporal Jerrica Lutz. And from the Natrona County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Jason L. Lutz. From the Shoshone Police Department, Officer Andrew N. O'Neill.
From the Natrona County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Josh R. Rollerson. Our next special presenters began their law enforcement careers in 1981 and 1989 with the Los Angeles Police Department and Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and retired respectively in 2013 and 2021. Here to present their brother's certificate, please help me welcome Sergeant Rick Sanchez and Sergeant Jay Sanchez. And from the Rock Springs Police Department, Officer Frederick E. Sanchez. The Albany County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Adam L. Sheets. From the Rock Springs Police Department, Officer Amber M. Sidaway. Our final special presenter began his law enforcement career with the Dallas Police Department where he served as a patrol officer, initiated the first community policing patrol, worked 14 years undercover, and retired after 29 years. Here to present his daughter's certificate, please help me welcome Sergeant Stephen Sterling. From Wyoming Game and Fish, Warden Heather L. Sterling. From the Manderson Police Department, Officer Joshua K. Wheeler. From the Wheatland Police Department, Officer Alexander L. Williams. And finally, from the Laramie County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Heather L. Wilson. Earlier today, as we met with the uh, members of the class, uh, I told them that I would save my final remarks for this period of time, and we have arrived. These past 14 weeks have required a considerable investment in time, energy, and money to prepare you to serve your communities as law enforcement officers. We have saturated you with knowledge, law, terms, and tactics tested you each week. We sprayed you. We tossed you. We ran you. We made some of you drive beyond your comfort levels, and sometimes ours. We placed you in multiple scenarios that required you to demonstrate your abilities to search buildings, to make traffic stops, to respond to domestic violence calls. You encountered non-compliant and even deadly suspects. You investigated crimes, handled people with mental illness, all the while maintaining your composure and professional demeanor. 
Some of you even managed the carnage of a crime scene involving snowmen outside the dormitory. <laughs> Despite all of this exposure, the reality is the real work and training begins when you walk out these doors. The public you serve will be far more critical of your job performance than any of our instructors ever were. Your next phase of training begins with your field training officers in your own agencies, who will build upon your knowledge and skills to make you even better and apply them now in real life situations. As you encounter those situations, it is important to always act with honor and integrity. Remember that law enforcement is always under the watchful eye of the public. And when one officer chooses a path of adverse actions or behaviors, that choice often affects all of us. That poor choice may very well tarnish the badge that so many have worked so hard to uphold. So now as a public affirmation of your commitment to uphold the high standards required of our law enforcement profession, I ask you in front of your family, your colleagues, your administrators and guests to submit to the law enforcement oath of honor. I also invite all the sworn law enforcement officers that are present here today to voluntarily participate together, Wyoming's veteran officers and our state's newest officers to profess their commitment to perform their jobs ethically, honorably, and with integrity. I would ask all those that wish to profess the oath of honor to please rise. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. On my honor, On my honor. I, will never my I will never betray my badge. My character, character. My, integrity, my integrity, nor the public trust. Public trust. I, will I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our own actions. I will always uphold the Constitution and the communities I serve. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the graduates, Peace Officer Basic 21A 156. Ladies and gentlemen, staff, students, that concludes our ceremonies for today. Our hearty congratulations to you for your successes, and we wish you safe travels on the way home. God bless.